Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're tackling a simple little caddis pattern. This is one I call the moldy caddis. And basically, instead of using a hard material such as wire or uh, monofilament or D-rib or anything of that sort, we're going to be using an ostrich hurl as our ribbing to kind of give this fly a little bit of segment segmentation, kind of uh, replicate any gills or breathers on the fly give it a little bit of a fuzzy look to it it's a pretty simple straightforward fly and i've tied this in a number of different ways with uh, antennae you know, without uh, i prefer it just sort of in this configuration without getting too fancy so it's a pretty simple fly to tie don't forget to leave a comment down below and i'll get your name entered into the next draw for stickers some of the flies we tie on the channel as well as some fly tying materials and whatever other goodies we can rustle up let's have a look at the material list and get started Let's get a fresh hook into the vise. We're going to be using a fire hole 315 in size 14. I've already placed a 3.2 millimeter black brass bead on here and we're going to be starting off with some black 70D UTC thread. So we're tying on a size 14 hook. This is a nymph stone clink hammer type hook. It's got a, a wide gape on it. So we'll just start our thread behind the bead, just a little bit. We don't have to go all the way down. We'll trim off the tag end. So for this fly, we're going to tie in our rib first. And for that, we're going to be using this. Um, it's an ostrich hurl. This is a Calbatus uh, color. So it's a light tan, or you could use a white or a tan or a dun color, something that's going to be somewhat light. And I believe this is a coronamid um, hurl, so it's a little bit on the short side. So we'll just tie that in behind the bead, and then we'll wind it down basically to the back end of our body. And that'll kind of mark as far as we're going to take our body material. So for our body, we're going to create a dubbing loop. So for that, we're just going to take a dubbing spinner tool, um, or if you have... Uh, some other kind of tool you can go ahead and use that uh, basically we just want to make a, a loop with the thread we're going to tie over the loop so that it doesn't come open on us and we're going to take a little bit of either chartreuse or this light olive diamond dub here and we're going to add that into our loop a little bit at a time and we just want to make sure that it's distributed along the length of our dubbing loop I probably could have made this loop a little bit longer just to give myself a little bit more room to work with, but uh, I think this will work fine. So I want to make sure that I have a little bit less dubbing near the top and make it a little fatter towards the uh, bottom just so that I have a bit of a taper in, in my uh, body and my fly. So we'll go ahead and we'll wind that down to our tie-in point and I'd started my loop up a little bit further just so I could uh, take care of any extra thread near the top of the loop. So now that we've got that tied down, we're going to take our thread back up just behind the bead a little bit. Just want to kind of leave a little bit of room there so we can build a thorax. And we're just going to start to wind the dubbing loop up the hook shank here. One thing that I'm going to do is just kind of pull back those fibers as if I were pulling back like a palmered marabou or palmered hackle, just so that all the fibers sort of sweep back towards the tail of the fly, per se. And we'll just go ahead and make sure that we've got enough of that uh, dubbing loop wound onto the hook shank. We have a little bit extra, so we'll trim that off want to make sure you've got enough of the uh, dubbing loop 
bound down before you cut off that thread. And we got a little bit extra dubbing there, so I'm just going to go ahead and trim that away before I wrap our ribbing. So this ribbing sort of acts like um, natural breathers or gills on this caddis fly. And we're just going to follow the dubbing loop. And we'll just add a few ribs onto this fly. This will give it a little bit of segmentation and also a little bit more movement and a bit of contrast. But it, uh, the reason I've named it the moldy caddis is just because it sort of looks like it's uh, gotten a little bit of mold, like a white mold on the body of the caddis. So one more material for this fly. We're just going to be using a little bit of black peacock diamond dub or ice dub. And we'll just wind that in right behind the head. We'll find, kind of fill the gap between the abdomen and the head of the fly. And I like to kind of make that a little bit fuller. Um, just kind of eyeball that. It looks pretty good. And finish that off. We'll just add a whip finish. We'll add a second one just to make sure that we've got a little bit of extra durability built into the fly. We'll snip that. Your fly's done, but if you want to, you can do a little bit of extra grooming. I've got an old toothbrush that I've cut down, and um, it just kind of helps pull out a few of those fibers a little bit. You don't want it too shaggy here. That's going to happen once you get it in the water. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.